Hey guys, welcome back to Ranger Survival and Fieldcraft. I'm Andrew, and what I have for you today is 20 uses for the Army Cravat. Stand by. Hey, like and subscribe. Leave a comment. Thanks. I know what you're thinking. I had to shave. All right, back to the real world now. So let's go ahead and remember the good times. Moving on. All right, so today what we're going to do is look at 20 actual survival tricks or tips using a military cravat. Now, the military cravat is a great piece of kit, can be found in a lot of military medical aid kits. The cravat is just simply a triangle-shaped dressing, 100% cotton. It's 37 inches by 37 inches by 52 inches, making this a great bandana and a great piece of cloth with a lot of material there that we can use for a variety of purposes. Now, we're going to break down the uses, these 20 different ways that I'm about to show you, into seven categories similar to our seven priorities of survival these categories will still have fire water land navigation and medical aid but then we're going to add three different priorities that being protection evasion and then tools and weapons now the first priority we are going to discuss is tools and weapons this is a single priority because we can use the items we're going to create from the cravat as a tool and a weapon now we're going to have three different tips or tricks here in this priority. The first one being cordage. Now we can take the military cravat on the base long section and tear off single strips along that section. We can tear off two or three or more and then simply by weaving those sections together using a French braid or another braid technique we can create simple cordage like the cordage we have here. Braiding these together we get a couple feet of usable cordage that is strong enough to accomplish most tasks. Now, hopefully we've all heard of a sock and a lock, or a slock. We can take this lock, put it inside of our sock, and we have a ready-made melee weapon to defend ourselves against from would-be attackers. We can do the same thing with a cravat. Simply lay the cravat out flat, place a rock center mass of the cravat, fold the top of the cravat over top of the rock, roll the rock up in that cravat, twist the ends, hold those ends together. We have a ready-made melee weapon to use to defend ourselves. Only this time it's a rock in a cravat, so I like to call it a croc. And you're ready to bash skulls. And then for our number three weapon or tool priority, we can use the cravat as a simple gathering container. We can lay it out, place our tinder or materials we're gathering inside or on top of that cravat. Grab all three corners, pull it up tight, and we have a ready-made container to gather materials with. Now for our second priority, land navigation, we're going to have one technique that we can use the military cravat to aid in land navigation. Now we can take that military cravat, take a sewing needle from our sewing kit, and then rub one end of that needle along the cravat 30 to 50 times, and then suspend that needle either with a piece of thread or on a leaf over water to give us a cardinal direction for land navigation so we can orient ourselves and then move out in a direction of travel. Now let's move on to priority number three, evasion. We're going to have three techniques in the priority of evasion. The first one being a concealed map. Now maps are very important for military personnel and anybody out in the field. We can use a military cravat to create a concealed map for the purposes of evasion. Simply take a fabric marker, open that cravat up, and draw the map or the area of operation you're going to be in on that cravat. Known landmarks, bodies of water, directions of road, put a north seeking arrow at the top and then a scale at the bottom and you have a ready-made concealed map that we can keep on our person in the event we lose our map. And then with our map all we have to do is get this cravat wet and that fabric marker will disappear and nobody will ever know it was there except us. 
All right, our second tip or trick under evasion, we can use the cravat for camouflage. We can simply wrap it around the top of our heads if you're bald like I am, apply face paint, and then you are camouflaged and begin to break up the silhouette of the human body to avoid detection during evasion movement. All right, for our third and final trick in the priority of evasion, we can use the military cravat as a saw for escape. All we need to do is take a strip of that cravat, twist it on itself to make it tight, and then we can use that twisted piece of cravat to saw through flex cuffs and maybe other restraints like tape to escape those restraints and begin to evade and move to recover. All right, moving on. Fourth priority of survival using a military cravat for survival purposes is gonna be fire. Now we're gonna have two different techniques we can use a cravat for to start a fire. Now you remember in priority number one, we made cordage. We can take the same cordage and use it with a primitive bow drill set to make fire. Simply take this cordage, use it in place of a bow string along your bow, wrap your spindle in the bow, holding it tight, and then using a bearing block with a spindle on top of our hearth board and a catch, we can create a primitive fire using the bow drill to make enough friction and heat to ignite an ember, take that ember, place it into our tinder bundle, and then blow it into flame, and we have fire. Good to go. For our second technique under our fourth priority of fire using a military cravat, we can take that cravat because it is 100% cotton, place it inside of a metal container like this tin, superheat it, and then we have char cloth, which is a tinder source. It will take a very small spark to ignite. We can place that inside more tinder to blow that tinder into flame instead of having to use a bow drill or primitive fire again. We have ready-made tinder in the form of cravat char cloth. All right, moving on to our fifth priority of survival using a military cravat for survival purposes, protection. Now the first technique we can use a military cravat for, thinking outside the box, if we're on operation and we happen to have detainees or enemy prisoners of war that we have taken while in operation, we can use that cravat as a makeshift blindfold, placing it over top of our enemy's eyes once they're restrained to prevent them from gathering information. Always remember, search, silent, segregate, safeguard, and speed to the rear. Now our second technique for using a cravat for protection is as a disguise. We still live in a world where it's not uncommon to see people wearing face masks. So we can use that cravat as a face mask to hide our facial features and move amongst a crowd or away from a crowd to prevent being identified. And then our third and final technique for protection, using a cravat, we can take the cravat and use it as a foot wrap. Now a foot wrap is a technique for survival, especially in colder climates. What we do is take that cravat, lay it out flat, keeping our sock on. We can add debris such as dead dry grass or other materials on top of that cravat and then on top of our foot, tie the cravat up and around our foot to have a makeshift shoe to prevent cold weather injuries to our extremities. Now it's number six for survival priority using a military cravat. We're gonna have two techniques under six, which is water. Now for our first technique, we can take the military cravat and turn it into a water filter simply by making a tripod, tying the ends of the cravats around our tripod, filling those cravats with material such as moss, charcoal, sand, and silt. We can pour our water through that filter system filtering the water, making it safer to drink, removing a lot of the turbidity, and then place that water over fire to make it safe. Simple do-rag. We can take a military cravat, tie it around our ankle or around our lower portion of our leg, above our boot, and then walk through a field early in the morning, especially with a lot of humidity in which dew is going to collect on plants, and then walking through that field, collect the dew off of those plants with the do-rag tied around our leg, and then we can take that, squeeze out the water from the do-rag, and it's safe to drink as is. And now for our final seventh priority of survival using a military cravat, medical aid. We're gonna have six different techniques for using a military cravat for medical aid, which makes sense because the cravats come in medical aid kits. Old school technique, using a cravat as a tourniquet. Here we just have a regular old cat tourniquet, which has replaced a lot of the old school knowledge we used to have but we could use a cravat to make a tourniquet as well. Now to turn a cravat into a tourniquet in the event we have nothing else, we can use that cravat as a tourniquet, placing it above the injury or above major joints where we have bright red blood spurting out. And then we simply tie at one overhand knot, taking a large limb from a tree around us or a stick, we can place that stick over top 
of the overhand knot and simply tie a square knot over that stick with the stick still in between the knots of the cravat. We turn the stick until the bleeding stops creating a tourniquet effect. Then what we're going to need is a second cravat or some sort of other piece of cloth or cordage to tie that stick in place so we don't lose the effectiveness of that tourniquet and we have a ready-made tourniquet using a simple cravat and materials around us. All right, our second technique of six under medical aid for using a cravat as a survival item is using it as a simple field dressing. This is just an old school field dressing, but we can take that cravat, place it over top of a minor wound, and then wrapping it around the limb, we can tie a knot on top, turning it into an effective bandage for minor injuries. For our number three medical aid item for using a cravat, similar to a field dressing in which we apply the cravat for a simple field dressing, we can use that cravat to create a pressure dressing. If we've already applied a field dressing or some sort of other bandage to an injury and we still have bleeding going through the bandage or worried about bleeding through the bandage, we can take that cravat, place it over top, wrap around the limb, and then tie a knot tightly on top over top of the bandage and then over top of the cravat and the injury to create a pressure dressing effect over that wound. And that's how you apply a pressure dressing. Old school. All right, now our fourth way that we can use a cravat as a medical aid device is to secure a splint. Always splint a fracture as it lies, splinting both sides of the fracture site effectively as best as possible with a SAM splint or rigid material to secure the fracture site. Two cravats above, two cravats below the fracture site, never over top of the fracture site and never over top of a joint, tying non-slip knots to the side of the splint to secure the splint in place with the cravats. We can then check distal pulse of the limb that's been fractured to make sure we haven't created a tourniquet-like effect. And then finally, swath both limbs together if they happen to be legs that are fractured to prevent movement and immobilize that fracture. And then we go seek medical aid. All right, our fifth method for using a cravat as a medical aid device, something briefly mentioned in splints, is as a swath. We can use a cravat as a swath. A swath is nothing more than a piece of fabric or material in which we tie or mobilize limbs together like the legs. If we have a fracture or a suspected fracture of one limb, we can quickly immobilize it the fastest, easiest way by swathing it to the other leg to prevent further injury to the casualty. All right, and our final sixth method of using a cravat as a medical aid device is as a sling. We can immobilize upper body fractures to the arms using a cravat as a sling. Simply tie the two furthest ends together in a non-slip knot, placing that over top of the neck of our casualty and then the injured arm inside of the sling. We can then twist the third corner and tie an overhand knot to prevent any movement in the sling and, and prevent further injury to our casualty. All right, well, I hope you liked that video. If you did like this video, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, leave me a comment in the comment section. I always appreciate your feedback. I wanna thank you guys for everything you do for me, for the channel, for your likes, your views, your subscriptions, your comments, your feedback, and your shares. And I'll be back with another video as soon as I can, guys. Thanks.